place to worship, fellowship, to love and experience the power of God through His preached word. The members of the St. George's Baptist Church on the Springs Belmont Road invites you to come and be blessed, come and worship, come and praise, come and give thanks every Sunday. The members of the St. George's Baptist Church on the Springs Belmont Road are with young people. Welcome to Experiencing God TV. I am your host, Stanford Simon. <laughs> Today I will be, as you have heard, uh, we heard the host before, Sister Cheryl uh, Simon, just me, who shared with us some information. And uh, now I have uh, with me here is Epson Mitchell, the Ajamo, and also with him. Um, I couldn't believe it. Um, Smalley's Blackhead. Well, not Smalley, Film. Um, Blacks, please, please stand. He's a brother. Uh, we'll, we'll be right there. I'll give him a round of applause. He is with the Ajamo. They sing together. I know him as Smalley's all my life. We work together. I didn't know his first name, but it's good to have you with us. God. And, and that's your brother. That's your brother. God, God, God bless you as you share with us. Now, it has been long in coming, I guess, but good day to you, the Ajamo. Oh, good day to you, Pastor. And, uh, and good morning to all your wonderful people at the Grenada uh, ah. Baptist. Yes. Baptist Church. Would you use the, this one? <laughs> yes. Uh, pleasant good morning. Now, uh, before I, g I get into whatever Pastor <laughs> want to say to me or ask me, I would like to take this opportunity to show gratitude for all the prayers that you guys have uh, been sending up for me. I want you to know that those prayers worked. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I, I guess that's the greatness of God. Put it in context for people, I guess, to understand. You have been the highs of your moment. You won the Calypso Monarchy and Grenada how many times? Uh, nine times. Nine times. Yes, sir. Um, and you've been involved in the Calypso fraternity for how many years? Uh, yeah, but uh, my mathematics right now, uh, 1983. 1983. Well, we six, uh, but 33 years that should be, right? Uh, 30 right, 33 years. Mm -hmm. Now, within the last, from August, they were, you finished what happened with the Calypso, all the carnival, and you were on your way to Canada. Yes. Well, what I must say, it's one of the most hectic uh, carnival season that I've experienced here in Grenada. Um, I, I was scheduled to do a concert in Toronto, Canada on August. 20, 28th. Uh, he invited my brother to take the trip with me, you know, uh, so he can see what's going on outside. Because, you know, he's, uh, he's better than me as a Calypsonian, but people doesn't know him outside, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, any of us, uh, to make a long story short, uh, I, I woke up on uh, August the 17th. An excuse because you could hear that I'm having a little bit of uh, difficulties with my switch. That's because uh, I hadn't got back the nerves in my face as yet. But as you can see, I could walk. <laughs> 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 and I could play my guitar. <laughs> I can't sing yet, but I'm going to be doing that soon. Yes. So, we'll, we'll let. Just uh, the morning, I, I went to the shower, and I started feeling this tingling in my left foot, uh, you know. I didn't take that for anything. But by the time I get to uh, the airport, <laughs> I realized something was wrong. Because when I came out of the car, <laughs> looked small. I realized I didn't have no shoes. <laughs> I forget to put on my shoes. I had a slip by in my foot. So I had to go in my suitcase to get a shoes, you know. But anyhow, uh, the tingling started moving to the other foot and also my fingers. So we had to make a stop in Trinidad. 
And uh, I had this headache. I mean, I mean having headache all season. Uh, I know this wasn't right, but that headache that morning, it was uh, something I've never experienced. And I keep telling small, I say small, something is wrong, you know. But we left uh, Trinidad and uh, on our way to Toronto, and um, it was one of the worst flights that I ever had. And, and I had many flights, and some bad ones too, where the plane dropped, you know. <laughs> but this was the worst. By the time we got, got to Canada and we cleared uh, customs and immigration, um, I was not feeling good. So I called my friend and asked him to come and get me, you know, to take me to the hospital. Well, <laughs> the rest was just history from there, you know. In, uh, in a day or two, I uh, lost all mobility. In my feet. All mobility in your legs? Yes, I mean, I could hardly sustain myself, you know. And uh, I've been in and out of the hospital uh, for three days, about three days smaller in Canada. And uh, my wife, uh, Lucy, <laughs> God bless her. <laughs> I just tell them, I have five wives. <laughs> you may think it's one, but she's. I even won. <laughs> so <laughs> she made uh, the decision, even though I tried to discourage her, say, no, don't worry, I'm going to be all right. She made the decision to come to Canada to get me. Now, the doctors at the hospital, they said that, that was not possible because uh, my blood pressure was uh, 200 and something, <laughs> over 150 something. <laughs> So they say, I'm, I'm going to get a stroke or something, you know? So I couldn't fly. But uh, the name Ajamu worked <laughs> for me in, in Canada. Because uh, in the hospital, they were treating me as a regular person. Well, I am a regular person. But in terms of what the documents say, I got a title uh, to my name, you know? So. Uh, when I realized I was not getting the attention that I needed because of insurance uh, purposes, because the Canada, Canada Hospital, they wouldn't honor my uh, U.S. insurance. So, <laughs> just put me on the side, you know. <laughs> but I, uh, I, asked to, I asked my friend to call the Grenada High Commission in uh, Toronto. And he did, you know, and I spoke to the, uh, the, uh, what you call it? The Consul General. Consul General. Consul General. And I said, so, I said, how could you have an official from your country here in Canada, and he's sick, and he cannot get attendance? I said, you need to do something, you know? <laughs> so he called uh, the hospital, and... Uh, maybe explain to them. I said, don't worry about the money the Grenada government going to pay. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> so, <laughs> so he called and uh, they kind of start to notice me. So that's when the doctor decided that they're going to do what they can to get me to a, a place where it might be safe for my wife to take me away. And uh, they get my blood pressure down a little bit and then they discharge me. And uh, my wife took me back to the US. Well, uh, <laughs> I didn't remember too much <laughs> after that, you know, for another week. I was laying in a hospital bed. Uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't move, you know. I was conscious all through it, you know, but uh, I couldn't, uh, when I say move, I don't want you to think <laughs> that I could have do this. <laughs> it was impossible for me to shift. So I'm in the bed and if I feel I'm tired, you know, like this, I want to turn like this, I gotta say, can you turn me please? They're gonna, the nurses, 
they would come and shift me like that. Yeah? So, yeah, it's been like that. And uh, by that time, it was uh, about a week and I hadn't eaten any food. Well, uh, thank God uh, <laughs> that in my normal life, you know, I practice uh, uh, fasting, you know. So, I kind of used to go in without food for a long time, you know. So I think this was a kind of benefit for me. But when uh, they finally diagnosed me, I was diagnosed with a, a disease called Guillain-Barre syndrome. And that is spelled uh, G-U-I-L-L-A. I A N, I think. G U I L L I A N. B A R R E. You could look it up. Now, it's a disease that uh, attacks your nervous system. But the dangerous part of it, it could also stop you from, from breathing, you know? And many people died because of that. Well, you could see that I was kind of fortunate. Or Blessed, yeah? So when they diagnosed me with the disease, there is a treatment uh, for the disease that they had to administer uh, to me for five days. But I was uh, too weak to, you know, to take the treatment. So they had to insert a, a tube into my nose. So they could give me some um, some nourishment, you know. <laughs> the second day, the master of the treatment, uh, things took a turn <laughs> for the worse, you know. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, I was having a lot of difficulties. Uh, I couldn't breathe and and stuff like that and. Uh, I, I don't remember very much in terms of the reality, the real world, what was happening, but I started traveling, you know? And, excuse me. I started uh, seeing uh, people who went, you know? Like my grandmother, you know, and um, <laughs> that's uh, this guy who died recently, a musician, uh, Prince. <laughs> Prince was right there, you know, at my bedside, and he came, he had this song, you know, he said he wanted us to record this song, and it was after it was in the studio, you know, in Mama Khan, you know. And I, he came with this song. It was just a beautiful song. And he, all the music were arranged and everything, and he kept playing this song, but he said, I have to write the lyrics. So I started writing, you know. And I, I reached to a part of the song, and I could not uh, find the conclusion, you know, what is for the, in the, with the lyrics. And I was really upset, annoyed with myself, you know, so uh, it was like, you know. But then, <laughs> mom, the lyrics came to finish the song. And uh, in, that was, I don't know if you used to say it's a dream, but whatever it was, I had a pen in my right hand and a notebook in my left hand. So, I do like this and try to write down the lyrics, but my hands wouldn't move. <laughs> but in reality, <laughs> I couldn't move for real. So that's when I realized, well, uh, I was German, you know, and I got up. And I started getting on. I was like, what this guy come in here and do, you know? <laughs> this dead man, you know, what he come here and do, you know? And uh, my wife said, no, it's a, it's a dream, it's a dream. But Anyhow, during the, that process, 
Uh, I heard uh, my wife, she started, uh, you know, screaming. And uh, the doctors, uh, they came into my room, you know. And she was asking, well, what's going on? Why is it blood pressure just drop down like that? And uh, I could hear one of the nurses say, well, he was in so much pain because they had to do something uh, to my spine, you know. And it, it was a needle <laughs> that big. <laughs> so this was really painful, you know. So they, they gave me something for the pain, but I didn't know what it was, you know. I was out. The doctors, the, the nurses say, we, we, he was in such pain, so we gave him uh, some morphine. I could hear that, you know. And my wife said, well, why did you give him muffin? I don't want you to give him muffin, you know. And she was arguing with uh, the, the nurses, you know. And I said to her, when she came to me, and they were trying to revive me, you know, because they had to put me on the uh, oxygen, and they gave me the all kind of stuff, you know. And uh, I said to my wife, uh, just let, let me go. <laughs> you know? And she said, no, 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 I was not going to die. So, I don't, I cannot say it's God, <laughs> right? But, this voice came in, in something it's spoken to me, you know? And he said, it's like, I think it's like God, right? And he said, don't worry. I'm not ready for you yet. Go and sing your song. But the song that was in my head was a song that I was inspired to sing one time when I was sick. The title of the song is Until My Walk Is Over. You should check it out. When he said, go and sing the song, and but that's the song that was in my head. So I got up. And I, I said, <laughs> my wife, I just call her Below. But I just say, Below. For short, I just say, Below. <laughs> but I mean, Below, because she's a beloved woman, you know. I say, Below, uh, call my brother. Now, I have this brother. He's uh, one after me. We one year apart. So we grew up like twins, you know. So we're really close. And he came to, uh, he lives in Washington, but he came down to Virginia to be with me, you know. So I said, Bilo, go, call, call Congo, call my brother. She said, but it's four o'clock in the morning. I said, I don't care, call him. I said, call him. I need bed, right? <laughs> so she did call him, and he came over, and I said, uh, I said, uh, I want to hear that song. Go find it in my phone and play to me. He couldn't find his song, so I said, check the internet. <laughs> I said, check the internet. And he went on YouTube and he got the song, you know. And he started playing the song. And, uh, well, I couldn't sing that time, but I still uh, had, uh, I could have speak, you know. So not good, but my brain was in talk. So I remembered the lyrics in the song. And I started reciting the lyrics while he, the song was playing. And I, when the song finished, I said, play it again. <laughs> I said, play it again. So he played it a second time. And I was singing, and then I started, you know? And he was singing. Then two nurses <laughs> from the hospital they came in. And they started singing this song. <laughs> and then I said, play it again. <laughs> so he played it the third time. And then I said, 
okay okay that's good because you remember it's like god say you're good <laughs> you know and uh from from then you know i just started to feel like uh I want to do stuff, you know. So even though uh, Muffet was like, they had Muffet in this, uh, it's like an electronic uh, something, it's just so I wouldn't get uh, blood clot because I couldn't move, you know. And uh, <laughs> I got a picture of that, but you don't want to see it. <laughs> I started uh, getting a little movements in my toes, <laughs> you know. And when it is that now during that whole process, my wife she never left the hospital. Right you. As when uh three days uh, short of a month in the hospital and uh, <laughs> when I was in a rehab I, I probably went through about two half a night <laughs> where I was in my room by myself. She was right there, you know. She sleep on couch or whatever bed they had, she was right there. So when I see my, my toes that moving, below, 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 look at that. <laughs> I said, look, 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 my toe moving. <laughs> so I start to do things, you know, and from the time I realized my toes could move, it never stopped moving because I just going like this, <laughs> you know. And then uh, one morning I get up and my fingers, I did like that and they went cross like that and four o'clock because I have uh, it's like a religious thing for me I'm a very health conscious person and you know I used to do martial arts and all of that stuff so I used to get up in the morning around 4 4 30 and 5 I go on now me and my dog I have a dog named Beauty we go jogging you know so every morning, like four o'clock is when things start to happen. So <laughs> I realize uh, I'm waking up more. I say, Bilo, look at that. Look, look. You see, my hand to see <laughs> turning. <laughs> you know, come. I say, come. Come see. Like I'm making a clinch. Next day, I get in a little something like that. And I was so excited, you know. And from there, now the, the doctors, they noticed that there was something kind of extraordinary about me or different. So they said, you got a good spirit. And what they told me about that disease is you could be paralyzed for years. They say it could take years to get out of it. It could take months and it could take weeks, but it's something that could be a long-term you know, recovery. So they say that, um, you, I don't know, but some, your spirit, you look like you have a drive and uh, we're going to try to get you to the best facilities uh, for recovery. Pastor, we got time. It's a long story, yeah? <laughs> Are you listening? <laughs> yeah, so anyhow, I stayed in th that particular, ho particular hospital for you know, maybe a two and a half weeks. I couldn't... Uh, and see what the room look like because my sight has gotten messed up too it's still not good yet you're looking at me but i cannot shut my eyes you know in at night time <laughs> i gotta do this and get the tip and tip it down so my eyes won't get dry if you notice um have this and i'll keep wiping my eyes because it get you think when your eye dry, you turn around, but <laughs> that's what happens when you have dry eyes. Yes, yeah, so they moved me from one hospital into a rehab center because they told me, they said, with your kind of energy, we think you could be out of rehab in about three or four weeks. I said, well, that's some good. <laughs> But what they didn't know is that they, they were dealing with something different. <laughs> they were God. <laughs> I spent uh, 12 days in rehab. Yes. So I went in rehab and one day I couldn't walk. 
I was just sitting in a wheelchair. And uh, they were giving me all these uh, little exercises, you know, but in my wheelchair, you know. And uh, the next day, they brought me into the gym. But uh, there were two nurses on training. Uh, my, my main nurse, was, they, she was training them, you know. So the, the nurse put me to sit down on a walk bench, you know, where you do exercises and so. So I was sitting on the bench like this. And she turned to the, <laughs> the trainees, you know, and she said, well, normally, you see like how Mr. Mitchell is sitting there? We would ask the patient to try and stand up. So she said, Mr. Mitchell, you want to try and stand up? I said, sure. <laughs> so I, do, I did like this. And, and I do so. Hear me? Ah! <laughs> I said, ah! <laughs> All the nurses, they say, amazing. They say, look at that. So they were so amazed. She tell me, try it again. So I sit down <laughs> and I try it again. I did it a second time. She said, try it again. I did the same thing a third time. <laughs> then she said, try it again. I couldn't move. <laughs> I could not move. Well, everybody in the hospital, they were excited because they said they never see anything like that. So... <laughs> When my session was over, they brought me back in the room. But I cannot, uh, I cannot call nobody because I cannot see to dial no numbers. So I got to wait till the phone ring, you know. <laughs> and my wife was on the phone. When she called, I said, Bilo, I stand up, I stand up. She said, what do you mean? I said, I stand up. She said, oh, I said, I stand up and my foot. Without holding a stand up. She said, Well, that's good. I said, Call them children and tell them. Tell them I stand up. So everybody was calling me now and I was bragging I stand up. But the next day, they give me a waka. You know what a waka is? <laughs> yeah? A little thing with wheels and you could hold it and, you know, and walk and move. So they give me the waka and they ask me to do some exercises. Well, I was doing really good. So, my instructor thought I was doing so good. She said, do you think you could try to stand up without holding the walker? I said, sure. <laughs> so, she take the walker and I stand up. I stand up like this. Then she said, you think you could try to make a step? I just walk like Lazarus. <laughs> Listen, I stand up like this. Don't you say, but watch me. And I'll make about four. <laughs> then they come and get me. And I say, yes. All right. Well, no. Well, I'm walking now, so I say, I could walk. <laughs> the talk all over the hospital was uh, Mr. Mitchell walking, you know. <laughs> so I become a hero in the hospital. They tell me, I have a gold medal. <laughs> So, when they realized what was going on, I, I was doing uh, two hours of therapy, back to back. <laughs> I was burning out the instructor because I had an advantage, uh, because uh, all these years of training, you know, physical. So, now my body, you know, once I got me, started to get my strength back, and uh, the determination, because if they say, do five, I do it five plus two. <laughs> I always put in a bonus on it, you know? And uh, the doctors, uh, the two, two doctors, the, the main doctor in the hospital, who is the chief, he's the head doctor, and my everyday doctor, they came into my room. And the uh, doctor said, Mr. Mitchell, we're gonna, have, we're gonna discharge you on the 13th. <laughs> 
<laughs> he said, uh, for all the years, uh, we've been treating people with that disease. You had showed the fastest recovery. <laughs> so I started to cry. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't believe that, you know. And I uh, say, I'm going home. So when the thirteen come, well, my wife had to come to the hospital and take her training, you know, because uh, she had to train me how to get in the car, how to take me out from the car, and you know, how to use the washroom, take off shower, and all of that. So she did a course on that, and we were good to go. <laughs> well, they gave me a walker, a brand new walker. And a wheelchair. <laughs> the wheelchair still in the box. <laughs> no joke. When, when we get to my house, when my wife pulled up in the driveway, she said, we home. I said, we home. <laughs> so she came and uh, to help me get out of the car. And I get out of the car and she said, let me get the walker. I said, below. I said, if you hold my hand, I feel I could walk. <laughs> you know? She said, you sure? I said, yeah, if you hold my hand, I feel I could walk. So she held my hands, and I walked to the house. And uh, from the day I went home, where they put the walker and the wheelchair in the corner, <laughs> when I go back, I go take a picture and post it on Facebook <laughs> so all you could see. <laughs> I said, and listen, this is, everything I'm telling you is the truth. I learn to speak the truth. Even when it's going to cost me something, I will speak the truth. I never touch the walker, <laughs> not the wheelchair. And I started uh, moving around. Well, must I have hands on and my progress? Because what I was going through, that whole thing. And this I maybe didn't remember to mention earlier on. But once I was in the hospital, I remember this man who I had an encounter with uh, some years ago. Maybe over well, you here now, Pastor. Pastor Simon. He called me and he, he asked me to do uh, 30 minutes interview. <laughs> well, he came to the studio and he set up his equipment and we started to talk, you know. Uh, that 30 minutes interview went on for about three hours plus, <laughs> you know. And uh, from since then, uh, he's, he started staying in touch with me, you know, calling me and find out how I'm doing sometimes, you know. So, I remember this man, and whilst I was in the hospital on the bed, I told my wife, I said, uh, call Pastor Simon and tell him to pray for me. <laughs> well, I don't know if she had gotten him, or he, but she did. Yeah, she did. Right. So she did. And uh, Pastor Simon, from since uh, my wife has I had contacted him. He'd been calling me every morning. And he knows the hour that I get up because he used to call very early. <laughs> and uh, he'd been praying with me steady, you know, with me and my family. Because I always had uh, some family members with me. And I would say, come, come, Pastor Simon on the phone. And they would come and uh, Pastor would uh, pray for me. So... Uh, Pastor Simon, he gave me a lot of courage, you know? And that's the reason when, uh, when the doctor cleared me and so I could have come home. And let me tell you this, uh, right now I have a clean bill of health, eh? <laughs> I went, <laughs> yeah, I went for a checkup uh, last uh, Thursday. Broke in them. And when they, uh, they check, uh, they did all the tests and everything, all, all the virus uh, had gone from my system. 
not, not a choice of it. But what happened now is, as they explained to me, there are these nodes in your face and uh, that has this kind of insulation over it. Well, that disease, they said, would eat out this insulation. So it's like, you know, we have wires and they are crossing together. So the, there's a confusion between the brain and, you know, the movements and all of that. But that would reveal itself. They told me over a period of maybe three or four months. But maybe you can see it. I have a half a smile now. <laughs> and like uh, maybe uh, four, four days ago, that started happening. Before that, when I tried to smile, I'm not, nothing, nothing moves. No, when I tried to smile, I could feel the movements. And uh, as we end up to, I want to, I want to say a special thanks to one of my good friends, Patrick Dells. Now, there is a saying that a king has no honor in his home. Patrick Dells, he knows about the functionality of the human's body. And I came down last week and I started getting some treatment from him. And I don't know, you, you hadn't heard me before, but I'm telling you now, I'm speaking good. <laughs> something good. And I think that uh, what he has been given me, you know, I think that a seen results it's helping. So um I just wanted to say that because a lot of people feel that maybe this guy know what he's doing, but I think he, he do. I think he does know what he's doing. So um, maybe we should consider um, we have any problem health wise, you know. Give him a try and see what happens because I, I have the evidence that he has been working with other people and getting results. And let me say this. He called me before he came down. Uh, sometime last week, I think, he called me and he said, uh, he just called me Jay. He said, Jay, I just met a guy in New York. He's from Jamaica. And he has the same problem as you. He cannot, but he, he said he's worse. He cannot speak or nothing, you know. He cannot walk. So the guy came down uh, last, last weekend, over the weekend last week. He came to Grenada so Patrick could help him, you know. And I uh, had the opportunity of meeting him. We get, we get uh, our treatment like together. Most time we at Patrick at the same time. So he do both of us because we go into the same thing. When I saw the guy, he was in a walker. You walk in, you know, and <laughs> I could uh, give us some man. He cannot speak. I mean, you have to listen really good to make out a couple of sentences, you know, or accidents. And I ask him, I say, how long were you diagnosed with this? He says, over two years now. <laughs> yeah, over two years. I say, man, just put your faith in God. And be courageous, keep on praying, and build some strength in your mental. I say, you're going to be all right. Patrick called me, uh, today is Sunday, Friday. <laughs> Patrick called me, I got a call from him. Actually, he messaged me on WhatsApp, and he said, Jay, he said, the man walk with the walker, you know. <laughs> I said, what? He said, you can't. Patrick, he said I couldn't believe. Well, I had the opportunity to experience it myself yesterday. Because he came for a treatment. And the car pulled up. And they opened the car. <laughs> I see the man coming out of the car. No walker. The man walk out of the car. Walk into the building. <laughs> and he said, jump out. <laughs> he called my name. So, my friend said, he said, jump more like a Grenadian. I said, you're yeah, he talking. <laughs> so, faith is everything, you know. And um, without faith, you know, yeah, because uh, 
we are nothing. You know? Forget about your understanding. We think that we are so clever, you know. Man is wide without God, you know. And they, they. So faith is everything. I think what has me here is uh, first the grace of God, and but with my faith too, you know, because I I believe that I was gonna be all right, <laughs> you know, and I'm all right. <laughs> um, thank you for, for sharing and uh, I mean through it all has been challenging and difficult but your relationship with God is now stronger than before yes yeah, so that's a Judy whole uh, process you know uh, I was just thinking as I say I never thought I was gonna die so I started thinking what, what happens after this Right, and uh, I come to the conclusion that uh, God has kept me alive for a reason, you know, because I had a taste of death. <laughs> it was just, I mean, I think it's just sweet, you know, because where I was when I tell my wife, Let me go, if she didn't respond the way of she respond, responded, I probably could have just laid down, you know, <laughs> I don't know, but. I think uh, God had uh, kept me alive uh, for a reason. Now, as I say, uh, I'm nothing. I'm without wisdom. So I'm going to rely on him to help me to make the judgment. You know, I'm not going to, because I come from one day, say, okay, well, you know, I want to get baptized tomorrow and I want to do this because it's like, um, how you put it? Like, you remember the, the parable about the sower, you know? And uh, when you sprinkle the seeds, if you don't fall on fertile ground, you know, you could get choked, you know? So I'm going to let uh, God guide my footsteps. And I ask uh, my, <laughs> I don't know if it's just my brother, my uncle, or my friend, <laughs> you know? But he's something. I ask him uh, to kind of work with me, you know, to see if he could probably shine some lights on certain things, you know, and I want to give the, this, uh, ask your blessing with that too, you know, because if you think that there is something that maybe a Jamu could do that would make him more inclined to what God wants him to fulfill, I appreciate uh, your kindness. Yeah, so... Thank you. Thank you for, for, for sharing. I, I, I appreciate it, uh, the relationship for which we have built over the years. I see God working through and in you. And so I just want to pray with you. And better church should just bow with me. Let's pray with him. Father, we thank you for Edson Mitchell. Thank you for his life. Thank you for saving him. Thank you for bringing him back to us. Lord, as your healing power continue over his life, slowly, regain the muscles in his face, be able to smile again, to be with his family, to sing again. He was already playing his guitar. His hand is moving, which he could not have done before. And Father, you are blessed him with a wonderful gift. Continue to use him, Lord, to empower others, but most important, to do your will. Lord, I pray that you surround him with your peace. And Lord, we commit ourselves to helping him and to surround him with love. And Lord, to continue to give him the support that is necessary. Lord, I pray a blessing over his wife, his children, his family. May you surround them, Lord, and guide them. And continue, God, to strengthen him as his trust in you continue to go deeper and deeper. This we ask in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> why should I get weary? Tell me why should I? Why should I? Hey, that's the song, you know. Hey, hey! I could sing it. I was singing. That, that's my first performance. Hey, hey! Yes, I'm moving on. Hey, hey! I'm moving on. Hey! Da 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 da! Hey, sir! From the cradle to the grave, little by little, stage by stage, I never get weary. Sing! I never get weary. Sorrows and laughter, time of year, good and bad, I had my share. 
I never get weary. No, no, I never get weary. Just like the breeze that blows high on the mountain top. I can't stay still, I gotta keep moving. I can't afford to stop. Oh no, why should I? Why should I fret? <laughs> Listen, until my work is over, I gotta do the best I can. I gotta be a full, brave, and strong. Can't let the system hold me down. But when my work is over, that is when I lay me down. For nothing more and nothing less. Till Jaja put my soul to rest. Thank you, may God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Trial and cross is in my way. I still got to take some time to pray. I never get weak. I got to pray. I never get. When temptation comes and strong, I got to face it like a man. I never get. Oh no, I never get weary. Cause in this time we pleasure and danger walking side by side. I can't stay still, I got to keep moving. There ain't no place to hide. <laughs> can't run from yourself and you can't run from God. <laughs> Until my work is over, I gonna do the best I can. I gotta be up full, brave and strong. I can't let the system hold me down. But when my work is over, that is when I lay me down. For nothing more and nothing less. Till judge I put my soul to rest. Oh God. Swallow. Through the valley as I walk, persecutors on my back. I never get weary. No, I never get weary. Some say that's what I deserve. The reward hatred for my love. I never get. No, I will never get weary. Cause my faith in my father is what's keeping me alive. I don't know what is coming, but I know I will survive. That's right. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Until my work is over, I'm gonna do the best I can. I'm gonna be a full brave and strong. I can't let the system hold me down. But when my work is over, that is when I lay me down. For nothing more and nothing less. Till judge I put my soul to rest. Oh my god, oh my god. This is like this song is like a prophecy. <laughs> it's like prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> Work is over. <laughs> nothing more and nothing less. Still, Jaja put my soul down. Ooh, Kaiser, Kaiser. <laughs> oh, God, God bless you, my Jamo. Jamo? No, but since that's your first time you're singing. My first performance. <laughs> Why should I get weary? Tell me why should I? Why should I? Hey, no way. Lord, 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 no, the Lord is so heavy. I'm 